Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, you will learn how to create this product list using UI Collection View. This product information is coming from a remote server. I am using the Fake Store API where I could fetch the product information, transform the JSON data into a data that is going to be read by the app, and then display it on the Collection View. You will also learn how to customize the UI Collection View cell by displaying an image, title, and the product price. The video will be long, so I divided it into several videos. And for the first video, I'll be talking about the basics of UI Collection View. Now I'm going to show you how we can create a grid using the UI Collection View. And what I have here is the starter project for our Collection View. All right, so it's one uh, view controller, and then we have a storyboard with one view controller here. And right now, what I want to do is I'm going to add the UI collection view. I'm just going to click the plus button here to open the objects library, and then type collection view to locate the collection view. You will also find other collection view items here, like the UI collection view controller. I'm not going to show you how to use this. Instead, I'm going to show you how you can use the UI collection view to display a, a grid of data. Okay, let me just zoom out a bit. And I'm going to lay it out on the view controller and pin this in the safe area, which is the top and bottom safe area and left and right, of course. And then head over at the bottom to set the con uh, the constraints. I'm going to click that, and then uh, select all of them, all the all the sides, and then leave them at zero. It means that it will set the constraint constant zero. Or if you're from web, from the web, then it would be a mar margin of zero. Okay, and then add for constraints and zoom out. Okay, so our UI collection view now is uh, constrained or pinned to all four sides of the, uh, in reference to the parent view, which is this view of the view controller. The next thing I would want to do is go here at the attributes inspector and see what default values we have. So currently our layout is using flow. So flow layout is, you know, is a class or an instance of an object where it helps in laying out your UI collection views on the screen. And flow is the default or something that's already provided to you where you could use it and then it will lay out you know, your UI collection view um, horizontally, vertically, depending, it will depend on how you would lay out the UI collection view, its height and size, and then it knows how to position or all of your UI collection view cells. And then we also have our scroll direction. This is, you know, if you want to um, let your collection view scroll from left, right, left to right or top to bottom or vertically, um, then you will set it here. Uh, currently, we set it vertical so that uh, when the UI collection view cells will be drawn on the screen and then if it's uh, some of it are drawn, drawn uh, you know, Beyond the screen height, you would be able to scroll to those invisible cells, which eventually will be will be visible. So, and the next thing that I would want to set is the reuse identifier of the collection view cell. The reuse identifier will help you know help the UI collection view return the instance of a cell uh, whenever uh, we're using or reusing collection view cells. Uh, you may be adding different collection view cells uh, in your collection view. And then in order for the collection view to identify which one that you need, uh, you set a unique identifier for them. And right now, I'm just going to set cell. So it's going to be a string. Uh, if you're going to do that programmatically, um, you can do that uh, in the, for instance, in the view controller. But now, I'm, since we're using the storyboard, I'm going to set it here. Okay. And the next thing that I would want to do is change the background color so that when we are displaying the UI collection view cells, uh, we can see it since our background color is white. So I'm um, just going to the 
uh, here attributes inspector and change the background and then set it to green all right so um, you can either uh, set the height and width in the storyboard but i'm going to do it programmatically in the view controller all right so the next step is to set the delegate of the ui collection view and you can do that here by creating uh, outlets and connect it to the view controller you can do that by dragging this connection to the view controller and then this will make the view controller as the data source delegate of the collection view. The same thing you can do that with the delegate here. For demonstration, I am also going to do that programmatically. So I'll, I am going to remove this. I'm going to set the collection view delegate and data source in the view controller. But before I can do that, I need to uh, get a reference to the reference of the collection view. So I'm going to create an IB outlet. Let me just make this uh, Xcode larger. And I'm going to open the view controller side by side with the storyboard. I'm going to press the option key and then press the view controller. And while selecting the collection view, I'm going to drag uh, this. First, I'm going to press the control key and then drag to the view controller. And then set the name of the IB outlet or property I'm going to call it collection view so that at a later time I'll be able to set the delegate and then the data source let me just close this and let's focus here in the view controller class so I'm going to use the use the collection view uh, reference and then access the delegate property okay let me just undo that delegate property and then set the view controller as the uh, delegate. Okay, and then I also need to set the view controller as the data source. All right. So um, any moment now, it will. There you go. So it will return an error, and then it needs uh, you or the view controller to implement a couple of protocols one is the ui collection view delegate and then the other one is the ui collection view data source let me start with the delegate first okay so the delegate methods are uh, normally you would use this so that you could respond to tap uh, gestures on the ui collection view cells i'm going to separate the implementation of the delegate methods and I am do, doing that so that I could group the methods. I know what this, uh, you know, methods here in this section or extension is doing. And then we need to implement uh, the did select method. Okay, you may you might make a mistake while you know uh, adding the did select method here because there's also another method did deselect. So. Uh, sometimes uh, some developers would make a mistake by implementing this as opposed to implementing this and it's in responding to tap gestures on the UI collection view cell okay so I'm letting you know so that you would not make the same mistake because I did that before okay so uh, whenever the user will tap the did select or the UI collection view cell will print something so I'm just going to print the row and index of the UI collection uh, collection view cell row index or the index path means uh, you know it's an object where you can get the the row and then uh, the section of a certain item so row refers to if it's you know a list and refers to the index and then the section it means uh, which group of um, a group of rows it belongs to all right, so it's like um, it's like an array with two dimensions. So we're going to print uh, the row or the section first, and then interpolate the section integer. So index path, and then that section, and then row. That would be index path dot dot row. Okay, and let me just add a column there. Okay, whenever I, whenever the collection view cell is pressed, it will print this. Now we need to implement the collection view data source. 
All right, so we need to implement the data source and the other delegates so that you can, or you can, you know, you can specify the number of items that will be displayed on the screen, or you can communicate with the instance of the UI collection view. So in the delegate pattern implementation, it's a way to communicate with the UI collection view instance and the delegate instance, which is the view controller. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this or remove that and then create another extension, extension, view controller, and then data source. So data source will need to implement a couple of uh, methods, which is required here. And Xcode help us in adding those methods for us. And I'm just going to return the number of items that we will need to display and I can set 20. So the number of items in section, it depends on how many sections you have. Currently, I don't have, I, I haven't set any other section. We imagine that we only have one section. So I did not check which section for which section it is. Um, but then we'll just returning 20. If it's, uh, if we have five sections, for instance, then I would have to check, okay, if, if section is zero, then return, uh, let's say return five. Otherwise, if, you know, if section is one, then I would return, I don't know, uh, probably two or 23 or two, it depends. And since we only have one section in this demonstration, so I'm just returning 20, I don't need to check which section it is. It's assumed that we only have one section. And in the cell for item index path, we need to return an instance of a cell. And we're going to use the uh, cell reuse identifier here and the index path to determine which instance of the UI collection view cell we will need. If that instance doesn't exist yet, th exist yet then a new instance will be created. So let cell and then we will be using collection view to dequeue that cell. If it's queued somewhere, then uh, we'll tell it that we need the cell with reuse identifier cell and then for the index path for which section in and row and then we need to return that cell. So in this uh, method, it gives us a chance to set the property or property values of our UI. So for instance, our UI, we have a UI label, we can set something like a string um, or probably change how, how our UI collection view change, uh, will look on the screen. So, and then once we're, we're done with that, then we return that instance of the cell, which uh, the UI collection view will display on the screen. Of course, it will do the layout for us and then dis display it on the screen. Okay, so the next step is we are going to set the cell size. We need to also implement another uh, delegate method. Since we made a view controller as the delegate, we also uh, can implement another uh, delegate method for the flow layout. So let me just uh, create that. So it's going to be UI collection, collection view delegate flow layout. The flow layout uh, have some, it has a method that will allow us to, to configure the layout of our UI collection view cells. And right now we just want to change the height and width of our UI collection view cell. So we will need to implement one of the delegate methods. And let me just type size, size, and probably layout collection view cell, this one which will, we will be returning the CG size of the cell, return cell size. Okay, cell size is, is determined based on the width of our screen. So what we did is we took the width of our screen and then divided into two, and then uh, we made it a little bit smaller, and then we got our width. So we already have our width, and then we we use that width and then increase it by 40% and we got our height and created a new CG size and set it in the cell size. 
Currently, the cell size is not set since we're not calling prepare uh, cell size. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it here in the view dead load and it will be called when view dead load is going to be called. So by the time that the UI collection view will call this method, we already have our cell size. I'm going to press command R to run this app and see if we've, did, we've done this correctly. And now I'm just going to adjust this so that we can see our uh, simulator. And hopefully, our collection view will display on the screen. All right, so we already have our UI collection view with our collection view cells displayed. This should be 20, and I'm going to scroll all the way at the bottom. And as uh, we intended to display a couple of columns, and it's displaying a couple of columns for us. And uh, the distance between this and the next cell is the uh, cell minimum uh, distance and then the line, minimum line uh, distance between these uh, line of cells. Uh, the layout is going to flow from left, from the very first item here, then right, and then bottom right bottom right okay so that's determined by our uh, flow layout which is the default flow layout for the collection view and I need to add some margin uh, at the top and left and right I can do that programmatically or I'll do that in the storyboard I'm going to select the collection view and then in the size inspector we have some properties that uh, we could set and let me zoom in all right so we have the cell size and we don't need to set that since we're setting that programmatically. We're not going to set the header and footer size, but we can set it here. And we have the minimum spacing of 10 points for cells, between cells and for lines. And for the top, left, right, and bottom uh, insets or margins, then uh, we can set uh, 16 for the top, left and right, 16, and then 16 as well. And let me just run this and zoom out. So I press the command key and then R to run the application. All right, so now it's showing some sort of margin on the left and on the right and the top. And I would like to display a navigation bar at the top. I'm going to the editor, uh, going to the editor menu and then embed in navigation controller. So the navigation view controller will be the initial view controller in this storyboard. I would be running the app again and then we would have our uh, navigation bar with a title products. Now I would like to test if our did select method is, uh, is responding to the tap. I'm going to tap this cell and right now it's printing the section number and then the row. Let me tap another one. And now it's uh, printing the row number two. Okay, it looks like that we have implemented that did select method and did not make a mistake in implementing that did deselect method in this case. All right, so that's it. And that's how easy it is to construct your uh, grid using the UI collection view. And on the next video, I'll show you how you can customize the UI collection view cell. We'll be adding the image, we'll be adding the UI label for the title, and then the UI label for the price. So stay tuned for the next video.